What about now? Is the audio better? Right about now. I think I need to turn the mic up a little bit. I think that I need to turn the mic up all the way. Turn the mic up all the way. Maybe just turn it down to 95. That seems like it's a little better. I think that seems like it's a little better. Okay, let's do this. Let me just set a tweet. Just a little quick tweet. Um, we live. Twitch.tv slash Sir Lane Game. So I really hope that this stream works out well. Because I have this tendency to not really um practice anything i just say fuck it and and then the stream's all fucked up and uh it's not it's not really cool it's not a really cool time but this is what we are doing today we are going to try to install what up lizzie Welcome, welcome. Lizzie, we're doing programming today. We're going to do some really, really shitty programming. Like the worst, the worst programming that you have ever seen in your whole life. Or at least we're going to try to. So we're going to do this all from scratch. Like I haven't even cloned the repo yet. So what we're going to do is use a tool called Git to copy all of the basketball GM code from GitHub, where it lives. It lives up here on GitHub. And basically, when you clone it, you copy the current state of the code base, meaning the latest version of GitHub or of basketball GM but you will also get the entire history. Every change that has ever been made to the game will be available to us. And they are located in what is called a git commit. So you can see that there is 5,967 commits in the basketball GM repository, in the git repository, which means that there have been 5,967 saved changes to the repository. Now, each one of those commits can have lots of changes. They can be changes in multiple files, multiple images. It can have lots of changes. But usually, usually you want to keep your commits like really small and focused. So if you need to go and revert that change or people want to understand what you were doing, uh, you, you keep it all together in this commit. So if we look at the matters commit messages here, he says, uh, like, finish refactoring do awards. I don't know what do awards is. But uh, yeah, new optimal media code. So each commit is like, you know, it's supposed to be like a focus change. The way I do it is I just do everything in a commit and I leave like a, a like a one sentence commit message that just says I changed a bunch of shit and then um, and uh, then people are unhappy. So we're gonna clone the repo and we're gonna get all of everything. So we'll just copy this here. And we're gonna go to the terminal here. 
We're gonna do git clone, and then we're gonna paste the URL to the repository. And, oh, am I in the, no, I want to CD stream git clone. And so we're gonna have to install a bunch of stuff too. I should probably go look. I should have probably done some research on this, but uh, I didn't want to. Okay, so it shouldn't be too difficult. We're gonna be using NPM, which is the node package manager. Node is a runtime environment for JavaScript that you can use to develop programs that run on the back end with JavaScript. And you can do all of this this other stuff like, uh, um, what are we gonna do here? You can run stuff like NPM, which will run JavaScript code to pull down these packages. What do I wanna do here? Oh, I wanna go into Atom and I want to add a project folder. Uh, where is the stream, 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 basketball GM. So we're going to add basketball GM here. And is it still, oh, it's still cloning because there's so much history and we're getting all of it. We're getting everything. What's up, Zay, man? Oh, wow, y'all are driving. Y'all are driving. That's wild. Okay, cool. So we have all of the code here locally now. And basically, we're going to be doing this thing called npm install. And what that's going to do is go through all of these dependencies and these development dependencies and it's going to install them and so basically these dependencies are just other other packages other tools that are available on uh, on the internet that help us do cool things so this is faces.js this is actually a repository or this is a, a package that dumb matter created that generates the faces for the characters on Basketball GM. So it's not actually part of Basketball GM. It's a, a different package, and we use that package in Basketball GM. Do I have npm install? I hope I do. So we're going to do npm install, and what that's going to do is look through this package. Oh. Maybe I should go into the basketball GM folder first. NPM install. Okay, so now you see it's it's going and looking for all of these packages that are in this packages.json folder. And it's going to install them so that we can actually build and run basketball GM locally. So this could take a little bit of time here. Oh, you're just listening. Just listening? How do you just listen? Is there like a, a Twitch, Twitch, uh, like voice thing? Uh, this could take a while. This could take a while. So we see he uses a bunch stuff here this is yes lint uh, lint is linting is is basically a tool that checks the style of your code so people have sort of developed these standardizations of how your code should look and uh, the linter will go through your code and it will check to make sure that your code reflects the style that's that you've chosen for it to to check and let's look at some of this other stuff. So I think what we're gonna wanna do is watch. No tools concurrently kill others. 
I don't even know if this is going to run while I'm streaming. We'll see. This could be a we, we could get you the whole process of trying to run the game and then it just doesn't run because I'm running inside of a, a, a virtual box thing that might not have enough RAM, but we'll see. Uh, okay, build, but yeah, we want to do start watch. NPM run start watch. What does NPM run start watch do? Uh, start watch concurrently kill others npm run start and then this will run npm run watch css and npm run watch js so it's going to be watching for any changes to the javascript and it's going to be watching for any changes to the css and it should reload all that stuff in the browser when we make a change we'll see i'm not sure why is there a little mouse here in adam what the fuck is that What? I have no idea what this is. Something about my configuration in the package JSON. This might be a linter tool that I have installed in the browser. You can have them in the browser as well to give you info about what's happening. Okay, cool. So everything is installed. You can see that we have lots and lots and lots of packages installed because every package can have its own dependencies as well. And those dependencies can also have their own dependencies. And so it's just dependencies all the way down. Uh, we can see, where's faces? Faces.js doesn't have any dependencies, but expand braces, this package, whatever this does, depends on braces. It depends on expand range, it depends on is number. So we had to install all of those dependencies in order to install this dependency. So lots of stuff was installed. And according to the setup here, that should be it. During development, you wanna do npm run start watch. Okay, so we'll run that. We're going to open up a second terminal as well. npm run start watch. Um, what happened? Something broke. Kill others. Kill others. Make sure you have the latest version of node. Maybe I don't have the latest version of node um sudo apt-get update i haven't used this virtual machine for a long time start watch script concurrently make sure you have okay mm -mm -mm. sudo apt-get update Yes. Whoops. Oh, wait, no. If I just do, I want to do upgrade, I think. Let's see if this fixes it. This could actually be a troubleshooting stream. Is very well usually I joke about how my streams are always just me troubleshooting stuff but this really for real for real could be me just troubleshooting my setup and we never get basketball GM running <laughs> how good would that be that would be swale that would be super awesome so we're uh, okay so it's updating a bunch of stuff I guess I'm hoping it updates node. Maybe I need uh, install latest node on uh, Ubuntu. There we go. Installed Node.js via package manager. Oh, Node.js 9 is already available. Let's do that. doing its thing right now why are you updating chrome i don't want chrome 
updated right now. Well, we'll let it finish. We're about halfway through. Why is it so slow, though? I don't understand. Lizzie, why are y'all going to Georgia? What's going on in Georgia? You're going to go on a tour of the Coca-Cola factories? You're going to go to their main offices? Be like, let me get some Coke. Coca-Cola is, I think Coca-Cola is based in Atlanta. I think. I should have updated all of this stuff before I started. It's all the nice things to think about after the fact. Ooh, Chrome 63. I was three whole versions behind. I don't even know why it's installing Heroku. Oh, I do know why it's installing Heroku because that's where I was deploying my um, basketball GM kit stuff. Okay, um, let's just try it. Let's just try it again just to see if it works now after running all of this updating stuff. I don't think it will. Start watch. Uh, what happened here? Compile. No such directory. Build gen basketball gm dot css. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try updating node just to make sure that it is not. related to that yeah and then we can just run so app get updates i don't know if version 9 is going to cause a problem or not but it looks like we're getting it it's on the way Picking up the niece for the week. Well, ain't that nice. Guys, I have I have assorted nuts here in case you want some. You just let me know. It's a little package of assorted nuts and, and raisins. So just putting that out there. Okay, let's try it one more time and see if uh, latest node works out here. Ah, uh, we have some different issues. We have fewer, fewer errors here. But it's saying, oh, the environment has changed since running npm install. Okay, maybe we need to run npm install. So this is what I like to do again. Rune def rf. I just like to delete node modules, and then we'll run npm install again, and get all of the the latest packages for the version of node that we are running. Anytime you have issues with NPM, just blow away node modules. That's, that's the best way to go. I don't know why I'm like, just like vigorously attacking the camera with this, uh, with this bottle opener. I didn't mean to be so aggressive, but basically just kill, kill node modules, delete the whole directory, Start from scratch. Yeah, Lizzie, we got assorted nuts and some raisins too, as well. It's not all. I'm always eating on stream. Okay. I don't know if um I don't know if this is ready for uh node nine. Maybe I should have started with node eight. We'll find out a little bit.
Maybe I should get the um Discord up. Could be somebody saying something on Discord. Or maybe we can ping we can ping Dumb Matter for tech support. Get him on here. No matter, we're trying to run the game locally so we don't have to see your advertisements. Oh, wow. Downloading all kinds of stuff. Okay, cool. So, it's a little bit more than a minute and a half. We're now running all of the latest and the greatest stuff. So let's try it one more time. NPM run, start watch. No. Let's do this. NPM run, build. Resetting the build directory, copying files from source to build, minifying, bundling into JavaScript. Maybe I was supposed to run build first. I just didn't read the directions. I never read the directions. Start watch. I thought that would have done it all though. Mmm, I see. Okay. No, we needed to we needed to build it first. That was clearly the problem. But probably Oh my god. What is wrong here? Depreciating calling asynchronous function without callback. Basketball GM tools. Minify minim, minify JS. No such file or directory. Open build gen worker. Okay, let's go into build gen worker. Okay, so we do have a worker file there. Mm, but what is it? 2017, 12, 17, 1041. Mm. 1041 well that file is there oh I shouldn't have clicked on that oh fuck that's going to freeze everything it's probably a massive file or maybe yeah it's pretty big shouldn't have clicked on that uh, pm run minify js so it was looking for a tool and tools yeah, minify JS is there. What are we setting? Are we setting environment variables anymore? No. No, no, no. Hmm. Let's try the minified JS. NPM run minify JS. Tools minify JS dot JS. Well, it's definitely there. I don't know if he uses like some sort of virtual environment or something. Let's go back and read the directions again. I probably didn't install. Uses browserify. Six or higher. NPM and running NPM install. Well, I did that from within the folder. Step two building. Run build. Mm. Let's just try npm start and see see if it works. If 
Feud Basketball GM, a local host. Hey, okay. So we got some errors, but that's all right. We have the game working and it's running locally. Right here, <laughs> you called dumb matter. So we don't have the we don't have the watcher working though, which kind of sucks. So we, we might have to just build everything from scratch. So this is this is the game. This is running locally here. I can make a league name, I can set random players, pick the Washington Monument, start a game. Uh let's simulate I don't know, five seasons. Now it is definitely not going to run very fast inside of this this virtual machine here. But as we can see, it works. We have the game running locally. And just to prove that we have the game running locally, let's see if I can remember where all of the UI stuff is. So there was JS and Yeah, so I think in this core, this worker core is where all the backend stuff happens. And then we have UI, views, nav bar somewhere, uh, or maybe it's called header, not really sure. Or it could just be part of the, the template. It's the dashboard. Okay, so this is pretty simple. This is the code for the dashboard. Create new league. Ah, that's the the place. Okay, so let's change this to make new league. And uh, we're already in basketball GM. So what I wanted to do npm run what was it called? Mm, build start watch. I really want this to work or else I'm going to have to manually run build every time. That sucks. So watch is probably a problem. Good setting sig term. I really want to know why this isn't this isn't running. Let's do this. Reset. Mm. PM run start watch. Sometimes I like to just reset to see where error messages are starting and where they're finishing. So it's minifying the CSS. It's building packages. Did it already finish? Oh, maybe um, maybe it's okay. Probably not. Oh, I think it's okay. Please tell me it's okay. Please tell me we're going to get through this without breaking. Maybe we will. Uh, so it should have said make new league. Uh, oh, I want F12 to open this up. Mm, empty cache and hard reload. It still says create new league, but I want it to say make new league just to try to test it all out
Is it still rebuilding the JS? It could just be that it's really, really slow. Maybe it's not a good idea to do this inside of a virtual machine. Let's just try running the build. PM run build. Let's see what that does. Bundling JavaScript files. I mean, we are running it locally. That was the, the dashboard here where you can create a new league. But it still says create a new league. I guess that's what's I guess that's the problem is is that it's just it takes a long time. Did it build it? Yeah, minifying JS bundle. Oh wow. I hope it I hope it doesn't uh, Why is it minifying it every single every single time during the development i usually don't see that i guess it must have like a lightweight map prop types it's got the prop types shut up prop type shape okay cool so let's try to refresh it now. It it might just be that I'm I'm running within this super slow PM run start watch. Okay. So now we'll refresh and we'll see if our change. Hey, okay, cool. So we got our first change to the code running. Instead of saying create new league, I got it to say make new league. So that's interesting. And I don't have any leagues, so we'll make, we will make a new league. Oh, oh, I have to click create here. Dang it. See, that's, that's how you think you, you fixed everything. Now we have one place that says make and one place that says create. It's not good. Go to the roster here and we'll check out the watcher the watcher is going to take some time so usually what happens is you'll get this watcher going it'll do all the bundles and everything and then when you make a code change it will just re rebuild the part of the app that was changed and then re-inject that into the ui i don't know how dumb matter has set this up so it may not work that way uh, but for the sake of uh, not having to wait two minutes after every change i hope it works that way we'll let that run for a little bit and in the meantime we can go and look for some things in the code that we want to screw around with what is this season stuff? Do do awards.js. Mm, 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 mm. Lots of complex stuff here. Okay, award players. Min value 1400 to handle change the number of games and playing time. It's a factor. Get top players. Maybe we won't mess with the award stuff. There's got to be some other interesting things to look at here. 
like player ratings. I would like to screw around with player ratings. Has skill. Okay, I guess this is a function that figures out if somebody has a certain skill. Don't fuzz height. Hmm. Player. Calculate base change. I don't know what that's part of. Um, contract seasons remaining. It probably just calculates a number. Generate. Okay. Uh, real height is drawn from a custom probability distribution and then offset by a fraction of an inch either way. So what if we mess with people's heights? Um, I don't know if we can mess minimum weight, maximum weight. Okay, see, so these are the mins and the maxes for the player weights. Nobody can be more than 305 pounds. They are either they're between 155 and 305. That's interesting. Didn't know that. Uh, this is the player schema here. Season minus age. That becomes their year. Mm. Let's check out the watcher here. Oh gosh, the watcher is still still watching. Let's make another simple change and see if it actually picks it up. Like we'll just remove this period. This period is gone, don't matter. It's done. I didn't like it. Okay, and now now we see um worker.js was rebuilt. It took five seconds, but it's not gonna show up in the UI. So let's try making another UI change to see if the watcher is watching. Um, like, I don't know. What do we have here? Hall of Fame. We can change something in the Hall of Fame. It's just a list of players. Players are eligible to be inducted into the Hall of Fame after they retire. What if we just delete this whole sentence? Bing! It's gone. Um, and we'll go to the Hall of Fame here. Tool, Players, Hall of Fame. So we can see the text there. And then we'll hit Save. And then we'll go here. And it should rebuild. Okay, so it took 2.8 seconds to rebuild UI.js. And it doesn't automatically inject it, but maybe if we refresh, we'll see. Okay, maybe it's cached. Mm, players are eligible to be inducted after they retire. So that's interesting. I don't know. Application cache checking event. Cache was manifest. Cache error event failed to parse manifest. I don't know what that is. But I figured if we emptied the cache and hard reloaded, it should pick up that new, new version of the file. But it doesn't look like it did. So I'm not sure what, what is, is going on here. Because it did regenerate the file. We can see right here, build.gen.ui.js was rewritten. And that is part of the UI, which we changed over here in the Hall of Fame. What if we open, if we just open a new browser? Or we navigate away and we go back. Um, Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's still there. Mm, what could that be? What is what is causing the old version of the package to get picked up? Let's try to close it, reopen it. Maybe we'll make a new league. 
and see if it's still like there. Players are eligible. Yeah. So I'm not really sure what the dealio is here. But we got it to run before. Mm, let's take a look at some of the other stuff in package.json. The npm shrink wrap. I think that's like the lock file. Yarn has a yarn.lock and I think npm does a shrink wrap thing. So we go to to package.json basically concurrently it does kill others. So it kills the other start watch processes. It runs npm start npm run watch css. Maybe let's go back to the instructions. Maybe I missed something. Running. To run the game locally, you need some way of running a web server, display content. Two ways to do it. Testing is there. Code review, Git workflow, if you want to contribute changes. Bootstrap. Okay. That's interesting. What's up, Joe Pecker? Pecor? I don't know if it's Pecker or Pecor. I can't, I'm having a hard time reading. Cause, uh... Yeah, maybe I'll make this a little bigger. Oh, Pecor. What up, Joe? So I want this to update. I don't know why it's not updating. You can see we're using React. This is this is cool. I have a. Um, we'll just look at this real quick while I try to think of something. Um, what do I want to do here? I want to hit F12. I have this React plugin installed, which lets you go into the browser. Is he using Redux? No, he's not using Redux. Uh, you can go into the browser and you can look at the React components. And so we can see the application here and all of the React stuff. This thing has some props. Three children. Uh, React is a front end library developed by Facebook that makes it easier to build front end components that are nice and easy to test and they they're quicker to update more responsive than trying to just um repack loads and loads of data into the ui manually it does a bunch of uh smart stuff with with diffing lists and and things so that you only change the data on the page that you need uh, rather than having to well somebody somebody subscribe or something as a follower i don't know who did that but thank you very much my green screen is all messed up sorry about that it's getting late so the the light coming from the window kind of changes things and then it uh it doesn't look doesn't look as cool. Let's try that. Is that better? A little bit better. Okay, so we're trying to troubleshoot a issue which I think is caching. I think it's a cache related issue. Um I think or 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 the server is just not picking up the latest stuff. What if we do this? Um Okay. What if we, let's just restart the server, run, start, and see if it picks it up. I bet it'll pick it up. 
we'll go here. Players Hall of Fame. No, it did not pick it up either. Huh. That's really weird. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I honestly have, I have no idea why, um, why this is not picking up the changes, because we made the changes here. This is going to be a two-part stream. This is going to be a four-hour stream of me trying to set up development of Basketball GM. And, and then on the next stream, we'll actually get some things done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's run start watch. Oh, Kissinger's here. Kissinger is a developer. Disable the cache and crow. Oh, I guess. Oh, yeah. I guess I can tell it to disable the cache in uh, in here somewhere, right? What did you say? Dev tools, network tab, network tab, disable cache. But see, I was clearing the cache out here, like. This, this is awesome. If you ever think that you're having a cache related issue, usually you open up the dev tools with F12 and then you right click the, the refresh. That, it doesn't work unless you have the dev tools open. When you have dev tools open, you can right click and then you can do empty cache and hard reload. And that's supposed to totally blow away everything and let you, um, let you have a, a, a fresh place to start. So let's hear. Well we're working we're working with version 1050. Right? Like what do we generate here? It doesn't say the version anymo. It said the version of bef before maybe that's the issue is that like it's not Maybe I'm just running the wrong thing because up here somewhere it incremented the version. Like this version was 49 and then it built version 50. And so when I went to the page, we saw version 50. So yeah, like right here setting, what did, what command did I run here? I did NPM run build. Do I have to run build every single time? Starting build.js, resetting build directory, copying files from source to build directory. Right, and then it, am I not looking at the, the right development version? Revision 20, 12, 17, 50. That's the version that exists right now. I can see it. If I zoom in, you y'all can see it as well. 2017, 12, 10, 50. So, I guess I'm not looking at the development server. I, I guess I'm looking at the packages that I built. Mm. So I bet you if we run, if we run build, it's gonna work. npm run build, it's gonna, it's going to produce a new version and so we'll just wait for that um done i don't see i don't see the same version thing or maybe it's not done yet it's still bundling we're still bundling okay cool so setting time stamps revision we're at 68 now i don't know where 68 came from so let's see if i hit refresh yeah okay cool we're running 1068 now and we can see that the sentence is now gone. Why is there an error? React is running in production mode, but dead code elimination has not been applied. Read out to... Okay, so there is some, 
some 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 sort of issue with how I am doing this. Um, I don't know how I could change it right now. I don't know. Woo. Basketball GM. So I guess we're just gonna have to rebuild it every single time for now, which which is lame. But this is Sir Lame Game Scream, stream. So this is uh perfect all right then let's do this let's go ahead and find some wonky changes now that we know how to get it running forget the dashboard go back to player and there is some random stuff here this is about injuries contract seasons remaining that is not what i want um This is this is the the lame station. Check statistical feet. This I'm assuming checks to see if a player had created a statistical feat. So we're making some constants here. Factor twenty five fifty. Uh the min factor times times that. Uh kill one so here's all the messages about how a player gets killed oh and that's cool how you can use the random choice in line within the i think i don't know are they called string literals in javascript i don't know what they're called get player fake age okay this is the the thing about how some players will have fake ages we can look here skills develop develop is what i think we want so let's look for develop there's seven matches for develop found um so we're gonna go through and find them develop increase decrease a player's ratings this operates on whatever the last row of p dot ratings is okay so this is where things get interesting randomly make a big jump why don't we instead of making that is that less than one percent i have i i don't exactly know how math works i don't math well but maybe if math dot random okay i see i think math dot random what is math dot random max out at math dot random okay so math dot random is i guess it's a random number between zero and one math dot random do it again yeah so basically whenever you run math dot random it's going to give you a random float between zero and one with a whole lot of i forget what those are called um so what we can do to make things a little more exciting now this is rare this is it's point zero fifteen let's make it something like i don't know 6.85 right so any players under the age of 23 they're gonna have a much higher chance of making a big big stat jump and the the possible jumps it looks like here is between 5 and 25 so why don't we make that more like I don't know 50 let's just double it so a player could potentially double their um their skill by by 50. now i don't know if this is for each individual skill or if this is this has got to be for an individual skill right 
It has to be. Where is this P dot rating? Oh, this is potential. Okay, that's a big jump in their potential. That might just be a cosmetic thing though. I don't know if I don't know how potential comes into play with other stats, right? Because we have all of these other stats here. So this is defensive rebounds, this is passing, this is rebounding. Ratings that only can increase a little and only when young decrease slowly when old. Why don't we um So what this is doing is it's looping through each of these keys. So it's doing three, it's gonna loop through those and it's going to look in the player dot ratings. What is R? I don't know what R is. What is R? R is a, a constant that is player dot ratings dot length minus one so it's the i don't know what that's trying to do i have no idea what that's trying to do player dot ratings dot length minus one i guess it's the total ratings uh oh because it's it's an array right so um Okay, okay. I think that's just an artifact of the way that uh where is the player schema? I want to look at the player schema. Where was the player schema? Uh it was somewhere. But it's not called player schema, so I can't just search for it. I thought it was somewhere around here. Uh, maybe not. I wonder what I could search for to find it. Wah, 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 wah. Um, so it was, it was, uh, maybe, if, maybe if we just search. Oh, there's lots of references to overall. And I don't have, why don't I have code highlights? Hold on. Let's go in here real quick. And go to preferences. And we want to install something real quick. A package called minimap. Install minimap um and we want to install minimap find and replace and also highlight selected so what this is going to do is it's going to show us some visual indicators in the minimap uh when we find something let's go back to player here and see if it works find all so now we can see little white blobs ratings so ratings is it is not it is not an array it's an object that's fine I don't exactly understand it but maybe we can try to understand it enough to screw around with it so limit limit rating where is this uh limit rating what is limit rating function limit rating limit a rating to between 0 and 100 so okay so basically this is just a function a safety function so that if the value that is generated in develop is more than 100 then it's going to return 100 if it's less than zero it's going to return zero and so that way we can make sure that <clears throat> any generated rating 
is going to be between 0 and 100. So that's why he has that safety function in there. So that is what limit rating does. Develop. So we'll go back to develop. So we can go back to develop where we were here. And so basically we are assigning J, J is zero. Rating keys. So is this the rating? I don't, I don't understand how that works, but that's okay. So limit rating. So I guess this is where the rating is generated, right? Um, so P dot ratings, uh, rating key. So it's looping through each one of these strength, dunk, block, steal. And then we have the, so there's a base change. What is the base change? Uh, calculate base change. Ah, okay. So base change is based off of their age and also their potential minus their rating. So if they have a potential much higher than their rating, how does calculate base change work? actually um, I didn't want to do all that oh wow okay this is another big fancy function right here so calculate base change so it takes in two parameters it takes in the players age which is a number and it takes the potential difference so if their potential is i don't know let's use small numbers because i'm shitty with numbers uh fucking if it's 10 and their overall is five then their potential difference is going to be five so let's say they're 20 years old and they have a potential difference of five and that's what we're going to use as we go through this function here uh, so it's dependent on various ages. Uh, okay, he's assigning a value here, val. Um, okay, so if they're less than 21, val is 0. If they're less than 25, val is 0. If they're less than 29, so here's where it gets interesting, val is negative 1. If they're less than 31, um, it is negative two, and then anything else higher than 31 is gonna be negative three. So that's interesting because we can see where what are the base changes for your players. If, as soon as a player is above 29, if they're 30 or 31, then their base change is, is going to double. And from there, it's gonna be triple, and it's a negative number, so this is negatively impacting them. Uh, so as long as they're under 29, it's okay. Factor in potential difference. This only matters for young players who have potential difference that is not equal to zero. So we are looking at, so let's say for our example, we were dealing with a 20 year old with a potential difference of five. Uh, if age is less than 21, and if math.random is less than 75, which it would be quite quite often, that would be a it would it would be three times as likely um to to be less than 75 than it would above, right? I don't know if that's how statistics work. So this is so we're adding that to the value. Okay. So okay. So this is interesting because we're we're looking to create a base change value, and so um, we are adding to these numbers up here. So our player would have been would have a value of zero up here because they are twenty, and then based on randomness here, uh, we're figuring if uh, what is random dot uniform. I don't even know what random dot uniform is. Random dot uniform. 
not Python, JavaScript, but it's probably the same thing. Uh, what is random? Generating uniform distribution using math.random. What? Increment a counter using the result of counter would be blah, blah, blah. You increment blah. That's not what I want. Um, Let's just do random.uniform. Low, high. What is the difference between random uniform and random random? Uh, random random gives you a random floating point number in the range of 0 0.0, 1.0, so including 0, but not including 1.0, which is also known as a semi open range. Random.uniform with given two values gives you a random floating point number in the range of okay, okay, uh, where rounding may end up giving you um, B. Okay, so I sort of understand that. Numbers. All right, so basically I think random.uniform gives us uh, a random number between 0 0.2 and 0 0.9 or, or not. Yeah, maybe, maybe, okay. So we're taking the potential difference, which would be five. And then we are, <clears throat> we are figuring out um, what we are going to add to that. So it's it's random it's a lot of randomness here. It's we're we're saying um is it going to be a I guess a, a less than, okay if it's less than 75 it's a big change. So if it's sm if it's greater than 75 it's a small change. I think if they're under 21. So this is this is to create some velocity in their stats, I guess. If they're less than 25, then it slows down. So if the age is less than or equal to 25 and math.random is less than 20. Okay, cool. Yeah, so if they are under 21, if they're 21 and under, then they have a much higher chance of increasing, uh, of having a higher base change value. If they're 25 or, um, or, or less, then it slows down. It has to be, math.random has to be less than 0.25, which is much less likely to happen than, um, than 0.75. And then we're adding these these things to to their potential. So it's a bunch of bunch of randomness. And then we're adding a little bit of noise to it. Real real Gauss. I have no idea what that is. So what if we do this? Let's make young players. Hmm. This is all very, very, very tricky stuff because you can really mess up some, some things here. Um, let's change it. Let's just let's make it a lot higher for both of these. Let's make it uh, less than seventy-five, which is pretty likely to happen. So we'll make that six, and then this is totally gonna break everything. So, so young players are gonna be much more likely to have a higher base change or a uh, a base I don't I don't remember what this is called yeah so really young players should have a much higher chance of of having a bigger base change and I also increased their potential jump to to 50 which is ridiculous okay so we made some subtle changes to the game here subtle subtle so let's go ahead 
and okay it rebuilt the back end stuff and so we're gonna rebuild basketball gm here and then we're gonna simulate we're gonna start a new season oh but the simulation is gonna be so slow that sucks that really sucks um Yeah, so let's do this. We're just waiting for it to build. And then, then we are going to, we're gonna open up the game. I'm gonna have it start simulating seasons. And uh, I'm gonna go hit the pisser while that's happening. <laughs> Okay. Do we have it? Yeah. Okay. So 1090. So let's see. If we refresh over here, uh, we have 1090. So it's using the latest. And this is really cool because we can see that it, it reloaded the UI. It reloaded the, the worker, which is the back end, and it reloaded the HTML. So we have all of the latest component versions. Uh, so now we're just going to auto play. Uh, I don't know. We're not going to get 10 seasons before I get back, but we'll just set 20 for now. Um, and maybe I'll just, I'll start a new season just, just to make sure that it's, it's, it's going to use all the latest and greatest stuff. So we have drastically changed how young players are going to be, um, developing in the game like that was a hu i made a huge huge change a couple of them so we'll go to auto play seasons here we'll set it to 20 and it's going to it's going to simulate and i'm going to be i'm going to be back in a second hopefully it gets a couple of seasons done and we have a bunch of data that we can look at but we'll see i'll be back All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We still haven't even gotten through one season. That sucks. Super slow. It's super duper slow. It's super duper slow. Now, imagine if you're Dumb Matter and you're making these small little changes and you have to simulate hundreds and hundreds of seasons to see, you know, what, what, how is the distribution affected? I think he's, I think he's really, he's really good with like stats and stuff. So he probably has some formulas that he, he applies to the the league files to check like the distribution of, of certain things happening. Distribution of player stats.
you know, it'd be fun. Let's check out the um, league leaders. Or no, we'll go to uh, player ratings. Oh, wow. Holy shit. Oh, my goodness. Look at all these fucking high-ass overalls. Oh, my God. Look at their fucking stats. Holy shit. We went crazy, yo. We went crazy. Oh, my God. Let's show the top 50. Look at all these fucking 80s. Oh, shit, man. Dude, everybody is amazing in the game now. Holy fuck. Look at all these stats, yo. Everybody's good at, good at everything. Oh, my God. You know, it just shows you... We just changed a couple little pieces of code. But, you know... Things, things rely on each other in the game. So the code that decides um, what their skills are, it's, it's, it's just giving everybody skills because everybody's amazing. Nobody's special in the game anymore. We have two, two... Look at these potentials, yo. Look at all these fucking 100 potentials. I wonder how that's affected... Mm. Let's go to League Leaders. So it hasn't really changed too much because everybody is really good, right? So it's not like we've made it so that there's a couple of supreme players. Everybody's really fucking good. So it doesn't it doesn't really change all that much. Kissinger Kissinger is googling stuff here. What did you Google? What did you Google Kissinger? Those functions, random dot real gals, and random dot uniform are defined in basketball GM. Oh. Oh, that's why they didn't show up in Google. Because they are. They are basketball GM stuff. Random.js. That makes a lot more sense. Dumb Matter rolls a lot of his own stuff. Like, he knows how to do that. He doesn't need to just download libraries for everything. Random.js. How do I get to the code? Prettier. He updated this. September 10th. Mm. Browse files. I just want to browse files and see what's in. He, he's made his own random. Um, his own random uh, library. Yeah, I thought they, they were. I thought it was some, some math library that he was using, but I guess he made it his own. So source JS worker util random.js source js worker random oh wait util util uh random js <clears throat> um choose a random integer that's cool yo he, he's made his own um i don't know if he made this So what's, okay, height distribution. Yeah, I guess he made this. Uh, uniform. Get a random number selected from a uniform distribution. Uh-huh. Those, um, those are words. I, I know for a fact that those are English words. Uh, <clears throat> so number, number, and then it outputs a number. So basically, the way uniform works is it's math dot random which can be a number um between zero and uh and one floating floating point times b minus a which are the two values that you enter so b minus a plus a I have no idea 
why, how, or what that works to do. But, um, but we fucked it all up. And now there's super players all over the team. Everywhere. Like, everybody is amazing. <laughs> uh, let's go back to... Let's go back to... Um, where do I want to go? Player ratings. Yeah, like, there's lots... Like, everything has been shifted up. So let's let's fix the potential thing. Because I think the potential thing is is what had the most impact. Because these young players are, are getting these 50 point... They have a very high probability of getting two 50 point boosts to their potential when they're really young. So where did I do that? The base change is... is I'm going to leave like that. But we want to go to develop. Again, I think. I don't really know how to use Atom. There's probably a way to have it jump to function declarations, and I just don't know how to do it. I hope you guys can't hear me chewing, because that would be really gross. If you are, I'm sorry. Okay, so here is where we change the potential jump. And we made it really, really easy to have a super high potential jump, which I don't like. I don't. I don't like. Um. So we're gonna change that back to twenty-five. And um, we're gonna make it more rare, but not as rare as nine point or point nine eight. Like maybe point. I don't know, point, point eight five, point nine. So there's still, we'll do point eight five and see how that affects. This is, this is going to, this is going to do some interesting things. So let's stop the play. Let's rebuild over here. building the javascript bundles and you know what we'll even try to do i think we'll just try to continue simulating on this same um league here to see if the overalls and everything go down over time right like will there after a couple of seasons will the young players not have these super crazy potentials and um overalls that's the that's the motherfucking plan yeah so so if you're under 23 you're still gonna have a pretty big chance to make a jump and it's gonna be between 5 and 25 so maybe we'll still see some super players but not as many But that was pretty cool for a second there to see to see so many, so many 90s overall is it done are we done here oh yeah okay uh now we're done if i wasn't doing this inside of a virtual machine it would be a lot faster for sure okay so now we're gonna refresh and see is 1103 the the version one one zero three yeah okay so we're we're on the latest version so all the rules of the game have changed now so we're going to go to uh we want to i want to auto sim um auto play seasons we'll do 20 and we're just going to sit here for a little bit and 
and watch it. So we can see right now we have like five players that are 90 overall. Everybody has uh, a 100 potential, basically. It's, it's ridiculous how many 100 potentials are here. So a lot of these players are getting up there in age. So they should start regressing. Their potential should start dropping. Um, they should start retiring over over time. And we should see this whole page get restructured uh, very soon. Unfortunately, we have to sit and wait. But uh, it gives me time to sit and eat some nuts and look at chat. Nobody's talking to chat. Pissinger, are you getting into JavaScript now? Looking through the source code. Gonna become a JavaScript developer. So everybody can make fun of you for liking JavaScript. I'm I'm thinking that we're gonna see very few 90 overall players soon. Where's Google? JavaScripts JavaScript is is difficult because I mean it's a lot of asynchronous stuff. Like when I first started learning JavaScript, I was like, what the fuck is a callback? Like why can't I just fetch <clears throat> some data? But JavaScript is single threaded, so you know you can't just make a call to an external service like a website to get some data and wait for that thing to come back you can't stop the program execution in order for that to come back because then your whole like your ui freezes right so everything is async so you make a call and um the rest of the program starts running and i don't i don't know exactly how it works but then like then like the call comes back and it figures out how to go back and execute the part that it was supposed to supposed to execute so i had to figure out callbacks i didn't understand what callbacks were i was like why do i have to pass a function into this function in order to get it to do what i want it to do and that was really frustrating was learning learning about callbacks but now in javascript the thing to do like asynchronous um calls to to external external endpoints or, or resources is these things called promises and promises make it a lot easier so much easier and then at the same time like front ends get really messy because you know, there's no, there's, there, there was never really a single source of truth, right? You could have data in multiple places on your UI. Like say for instance, you have um, uh, a chat, right? With, with people chatting and uh, you have a counter that counts the number of chats. Uh, or the number of people in a room, right? So you have people in a room and you have um, the number of people in the room. So a person joins a room and you you add them into the UI in the room. You also have to increase the counter of the people in the room. And I guess in the past, I would use things like jQuery to, to try to you know, figure out how many elements are in this thing. 
and uh, mind you, I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about, but I'm, I'm not a, a programmer by trade. I just do this stuff for fun. Um, and so like things could become out of sync, right? You could add a person into the room, but then your, your code that's supposed to increment the number doesn't fire for whatever reason. And so now the number of people in the room don't match the, the number of people that are in the room list. But then you get these things like react, which I love react. And I guess there's, there's been other, there's been libraries before that. There's been a lot of libraries that have tried to solve these problems of, um, of basically what is the state of the application angular tried to do it in in their own way but i like react so react has this idea of um component state which is sort of like a database inside of ui elements and so um instead of having something that's like um hmm, how do i explain that i've never tried to explain stuff like this so it's really interesting to to illustrate that I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, basically, React like lets you have these little databases in inside of your UI elements. And so, when you change something in the UI, every every part of your interface that relies on that data will automatically change. Like you don't have to manually say, okay, include a person in this room and then increment the number and have all these weird edge cases where some code won't get fired. You basically say, um, add a person in the room and, um, and the room list is a count of the number of people that are in that room. And so it, it automatically figures out everything. That probably doesn't make any sense because I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not a programmer. But it's awesome. It's like having these little front end databases and the little databases are the source of truth. And so, um, so it's really cool. It makes it much easier to reason about an application and also to troubleshoot and to figure out where things get wrong. And then you have things like Redux, which is like, it's like the whole database in in your front end application. So in React, you have component level little databases, right? So if you have this little database, like for instance, you might have a little database here, but then you have another page on your website that also wants data from that little database. But that's not how React works. They don't, they don't just talk to each other like that. So you have this thing called Redux and Redux sits in the background and then all of your UI components listen to Redux and they can change the Redux uh, state, the, the little database. And then that's also gonna change all of the UI elements that are relying on the data in that database. I don't know what I'm talking about, but that's my understanding of how it works. So basically the point that I was trying to make is that I found it really, really difficult a long time ago to build um, really rich, beautiful fast user interfaces that uh, that were easy to reason about and to troubleshoot but after i learned things like react and redux and uh and core javascript as well because those are all libraries that are built off of core javascript it was it was much easier for me to reason about my application and to build these small ui components and to to get it to get it all to work and it was always it was always really difficult for me to do that before i think these libraries make it really really easy these days really really easy so if uh if you're learning javascript it's really difficult these days because lots of people are using these libraries you don't just learn the javascript language then you have to learn react or angular for all of this stuff. So check it out. We're starting to see, we're starting to see a reduction here. Check out, uh oh, hold on. Wait a minute.
there are some visitors with kids here. And the kids are fucking everything up. Yeah, so that was um, that was my rant on I don't know anything about uh, front end development, UI development, JavaScript development, but uh, I think the libraries and everything make it a lot easier. I think I think they've made it a lot easier for uh, an individual to build these really really slick looking, um, easy to troubleshoot, easy to debug fast functional user interfaces and i had a lot of trouble with them before but it is a lot of work to learn it all you know it's not just not just javascript okay so we've simmed a lot of seasons and the expected changes have occurred the potentials aren't so high. I don't see any 100. Oh, there's one 100 potential. There's another 100 potential. So this is much more reasonable. If we go to the league leaders. Um, I don't know. It's still pretty... Pretty, mm, it doesn't look too crazy. I mean, the assist leaders aren't aren't like doing anything crazy. Uh, rebound leaders are kind of like where they're usually at. Points are, are kind of where they're usually at. So, even though we have made a lot more super players it doesn't seem like the outcome of their stats and their simulations have changed all that much i mean 25 per yeah so that's interesting I wonder how that works. I wonder how that, that gets sorted out. Let's do this. Let's stop. Is there a way for us to make like a unicorn? Like a really special player? every once in a while well we didn't really change much of the stat changes did we I guess we changed a couple of them <laughs> no nobody's coming to see uncle lame game there is no uncle lame game Um, I'm, I'm wondering, well, let's go back to the player ratings, right? So we have made, we've made everybody better. And so nobody is really that special anymore. Thirty two Gerben Macau here. Twenty three points. Win shares. What is it? EWA. Let's go to the Hall of Fame. Has anybody been inducted into the Hall of Fame? Even EWA is pretty standard. So what if we do this? What if we make it... This is what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to actually cap the potential jump um, to, to maybe five. No, 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 no. 10 right we make it 10 so there's a pretty good chance that um that they're gonna jump 10 if they're under 23 but and we're gonna do some copy and pasting here 
a little bit of copy and pasting. But if they're under 23, and this is basically going to duplicate it with a 9.5, we'll make it 0.95, they could basically increase it <clears throat> even more. Um, so, I don't know. Let's make it um, between 10 and 20, right? So if they're, if they're really young, they have an opportunity to become like a monster player because they could get this jump and then they could get another jump as well on top of it. I don't know if that's going to break anything. But uh, but basically, basically, it's going to. What is wrong with these people, yo? These fucking kids are driving the adults crazy. Um, math random. Less than twenty three. Point nine five. Yeah, well, I want it to be like super big, you know, like big, big, big. Let's try this. Okay, so now we're going to rebuild it. And then we are going to, uh, we're going to see what happens. We're going to sim a bunch more games. So this is what I think is going to happen. Okay, potentials are going to be drastically reduced for new young players. Um, that is, oh fuck, I didn't mean to open a second. I didn't mean to open Adam Beta. Close it. Let's close it. Close it, please, please. Close it. Close it quick, quickly. Let's check the stream. Try to check my stream health. I guess I can't. Um. Okay, so we have we have drastically reduced the. The, the big potential jumps for players. But we have also created a much smaller chance. And we'll reduce this even more. We'll make this 0. 0.95. Like, because what I want to do is I want I want there to be some, like, super players. I want everybody's um, potential to be reduced and their overall to get reduced. And then I but I want there to be a chance for like some super players to get generated to so so we can see if their stats like below everybody else's stats away. So I'm gonna have to rebuild it again. God damn it. Um Storage event. What is storage event? Data table sorted. Hall of Fame. Old value. New value. I don't know what that is. I do have a fidget spinner, by the way, actually. I bought one. I'm going to be honest. I, I, bought, I bought 600 of them. And I was thinking that I could sell them to make a profit, but I still have. I have 601 now because the rest are in boxes. And I just wanted one to play with, so I bought an extra one. But I'm just waiting for when they come back around. You know, I'm these things, these things, these fads, they go in cycles. So maybe 20 years from now, fidget spinners are going to come back and I'm going to have the, the supply. So, um, I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. Um okay. So now we want to hit refresh. 
and make sure that we have the latest version of the game, 1125, and that is the correct version. So we're just gonna start uh, the simulation again, and we should see over time, all of the player's potentials and stats should dramatically drop, except for a couple of few who are gonna get these really, really big bumps. Did I break the game? Okay, so back to player ratings, which we are already there. I don't know why I clicked that again. Mm, we're gonna auto play seasons, 30 seasons. Uh, s s cool. So somebody just got inducted into the Hall of Fame. I don't know how the Hall of Fame calculations actually actually work. That's right, Kissinger. They're coming back. I'm telling you, fidget spinners are gonna come back. And I'm gonna offload my uh my um you know my stuff. So we're just gonna sit here and um, and see what happens. We just copy and paste in some code, which is, you know, that's when you're using Stack Overflow, that's how a lot of people make their money. It's just copy and pasting stuff from Stack Overflow. And we just copy and paste it from the source code to try and create situations where some some super super young players can develop. We did mess with a bunch of those other stats for, for I don't know what stats we messed with. I don't remember which ones they were. But I'm hoping to see a couple of super players a little bit. In a little bit. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Kissinger, you been flying anything lately? You got some stuff flying? Mm -mm. Big big break from from flying, eh? I wonder how many seasons it's going to take. I guess I don't know. Look at all these all these skills. That's the thing about it. Like the skills if everybody's good, then the skills don't matter. Like there's no point to have these fucking little skill things here if everybody is awesome at it at everything. Look at all these 100 point players everywhere. Like that's dumb. That's really dumb, but there's so many old ones so they're they should be slowing down. I think after after we get about 10 seasons through we'll see things normalize a bit and um, these overalls and, and these potentials will reduce as as I hope they will how long has the stream been going oh wow we're coming up on two hours so this is this is what we'll do this has been really fun this is a really really uh, 
Oh, Kissinger, you gotta finish it. Finish it. Finish it. This has been a really fun stream. I've never, I've never done like a programming, developing kind of stream, so this was really cool. And uh, we managed to break Basketball GM up a little bit with uh, with the knowledge gained from the the stream the kind of interviews it wasn't really an interview stream i just wanted dumb matter to be able to share his piece about the code and and how everything is organized with the knowledge that we gained from there we were able to quickly go into a couple of files and find some really important aspects of the game and break down uh, how they work and then go in and and make some changes and then we can see these um these noticeable changes uh, right as we simulate the game locally. So we're just waiting for all of these old players to die. <laughs> Evil. Evil. What is this emoji, Lizzie? Picnic basket. Oh, panic basket. <laughs> oh man, I forgot to um I forgot to share the um the chat. There's the chat. My bad. People have been chatting and uh and now it disappeared. Why did it disappear? I don't know. Chat disappeared. Okay. That's fine, chat. Just disappeared. That's okay. Hey, who made a clip of my stream? Who made a fucking clip? How do I see it? So what, Lizzie? I'm looking. I'm gonna look at this clip. I don't know who just made a clip. Oh, I can't see it. It was clipped by Sinos. What did you what did you clip here? Probably something embarrassing. Oh, that wasn't an interesting clip at all. But this wasn't an interesting stream, so I can't blame you for that. There was a, uh, there's not a lot, a lot of whole, whole lot of interesting stuff going on. How's it looking? Uh, it's, it's, it's getting a bit more normal here. If we look at these young players, <laughs> there's, there's players that are playing until they're like 38 and stuff. Cause they're so good. Why, why quit? Like, look at all these guys in their twenties and stuff. 39, this player's 39. He's still 72 overall. So it's, it's going to take time for a lot of these older players that were part of the ridiculous code change to die out but uh this is a this is a, a baller right here pete mcclure and he just dropped in overall stepona stankus stankus oh i said so that's why lizzie wrote so because i said so I always forget what I'm saying. Like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, man. There's there's not really going to be a whole lot more to the stream. We're just we're just waiting to see how these values change. I wish that um 
I don't know. Maybe I can try to stream it on like another machine somehow and it won't be so fucking slow. But this is I mean this is this is looking much more normal. See now we're now we're getting to all of these players normalizing. All of the older players are kind of losing their their potential in their overall as we move along. I think we've probably simulated maybe five seasons since the last change. And we have one player that's 88 overall. Two players with 100 potential. So maybe these are... Yeah, Brandon Brandon Hampton here was definitely uh, part of the under 23. Or maybe it was 21. I guess it was under 23 where you could get these really big potential boosts. Hmm... But I want to see some more. Let's go to the league leaders now and see how that's impacted by everything. Yeah, I mean, it's still, I mean, no, there's no real clear, amazing player here. You know, you got a bunch of guys that are putting up 26 points per game, 25 points per game, 23 points per game. Uh, so maybe maybe it's I don't know I don't know how to how to get a super player going to that's putting up like forty points per game or thirty five points per game or something like that. Let's let's just give it a bit more time. I have a little more time here. Seven eight. I have to go somewhere at nine thirty. Uh, two. Nothing special so far. Let's check out the Hall of Fame again. Mm. We're gonna load. loading there's a bunch of players to load oh, I guess because I told it to load 50 players it might take a minute no we're not gonna load player ratings maybe Navis styles um, we're screwing around with the code of a basketball management game lets you manage a basketball team and so we've uh we've pulled the code down and we're screwing around with it to uh see how we can mess around with the players and stuff that's what we're doing is that okay with you is that is that cool can we do that it's all right it's all right if we do that Boom. Okay, so now things are much more normal. 80s, 70s. Well, not not so normal. I mean, usually there's not this many 80s and and uh and high potentials. I'd be interested to see how a bunch of these players develop. No super players yet though. I was hoping I was hoping we could get a couple that are like ninety-five way up there like we had before. But I guess not. Uh league leaders. Yeah, it also depends on which stats develop too, right? So if we go back to player ratings. Like, how many of these players... Yeah, I mean, there's so many players that have, like, 98, 97, 98, 100, 100, two-point shots. So there's there's no, like, clear, amazing shooter generated in all the bunch. So we have to go back and look. We'll do this in another stream. We'd have to go back and look at all of these values and see how we can make it um, more difficult for them to 
improve. So we're shooting. Yeah, like inside, free throw, field goal, three pointer. You know, we could decrease these. Yeah, so like if they're under 30, it would be they would they could get a plus one but if it's less than 24 then it 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 stays to the base change actually i don't really know how that works we'll have to look at that closer but we'll we'll look at these individual stats because i really like messing around with the player um player ratings and stuff so we'll take a look at that so that's that's why there's nothing um, crazy happening with the generated stats because there's a lot of really great shooters and dunkers and three-point shooters. So nobody is really going to stand out in any of the league leaders. We have to take a look at how those stats are improved across the board instead of just messing with the potential um and uh and stuff like that so that's it i mean there's not really not really a whole lot more going on today so we're probably going to call it a day right now so thanks for everyone came to kick it for it lizzie kissing jar who else was here zam man was here Joe, whoever, whatever. First coding stream. We'll do some more, some more stuff like that. You guys can li listen to me pretend to talk like I'm a programmer. Uh, but for now, we're gonna call it a day. So I'll catch y'all later. Peace.